we're on here. <clears throat> Looks like we are live. We are live. Let's see if it's showing up in the group. We are doing a check to make sure that we are where we supposed to be. All right. And I'm going to have my peoples get yeah. on it. Okay. So, yep, we are live. Awesome. Um, so I can't even come <laughs> close to articulating how excited I am for this conversation. Um, this is, I interviewed her a couple of years back and she said some things that landed for me in a way that was absolutely profound. And I've been following her for a long, long time. And she puts out an amazing content and has a beautiful heart and is really, really an example of what it means to do the work, to do the deep work. And so let me talk to you about Jessica Alstrom. Jessica is a quantum biohacker. Now you're going to understand that at a whole other level as we get into this conversation. She's an intuitive life coach, medical intuitive, author, radio show host, and a re recent recipient of the World Server Award issued by the International Soulful Awards Committee. Wow. Creator of quantum fit fitness and the quantum method. She is bridging spiritual development, energy medicine, and the quantum science to create a complete self-realization and expedient healing programs for students all over the world. <laughs> wow. Welcome, welcome. Sounds cool. Yeah. Wow. And, and so she and I was talking before we got on here and talking about some of the things that she's done since last time we, we had the conversation. And if you're not following her, go type in her name and go follow her on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else. She's an amazing, amazing soul. Mm -hmm. And really the part that we were just talking about is this journey that she's been on for these last couple, this last week. I want, well, you can go see the post in her stories to see what we were really talking about. Um, but I really want to. So the first question, and and this is this is your mastery. This is where you live, is this whole thing about manifestation. Okay. Yeah. And I, I know we could talk about this for, for okay. weeks. Right. Um, but what has been your journey around figuring out? What does it really take to manifest and why does it work for some and why doesn't it work for others? And by the way, before you answer that, I see somebody put Facebook user on there. If you could click on the StreamYard link, then we're going to be able to see who it is that's actually commenting so that we can um, acknowledge you when you comment. That would be great. So what determines why it works for some and what determines why does it take long and mm -hmm. um, it doesn't work at all? Right. Or it totally backfires and you get what you don't want. Right. Mm. Yeah. We, I think we've all had our share of that. We were like, right. But, but, well, I would say that it has to go back to, to biohacking again. So, you know, I think that we are taught when we start our journey that, you know, Oh, thoughts create my reality. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we get a little deeper in that and we realize that there are thoughts that we're not aware that we're thinking. And our body mm -hmm. is thinking thoughts that we're not aware that are that are being thought. And our lineage, our bloodline is having thoughts that we are not aware of. And so then when you kind of like mix all of that together, you're going, wait, wait, who's whose thoughts are actually manifesting this? Mm -hmm. And 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 who's thinking it? Right. Because, again, when we realize that the you that is desiring is only five percent of your energy. The you that is actually asking, like the the you that is lacking something, is only five percent of who you are. Okay, right? you got to you got to unpack that. That's okay. <laughs> you All right. Unpack that a little bit. Okay. So you have so so there's four there's four levels of consciousness. Okay. And and now and the best way for me to to sh to share this is to to the analogy of like a movie theater. Okay. So we've all been to a movie theater and mm -hmm. we're sitting there in our comfy seats with our popcorn and we are, are asked to be in this dark room and then the lights come on. Right. And the light is coming on. And all of a sudden there is pictures that we are, we are looking at mm -hmm. and there is very intense music that is taking us on this emotional journey. Oh, I'm going to laugh here. I'm going to cry here based on this music. And so for this next two hours, we're in this experience where it doesn't really matter that it's not happening to us, we're, we're in that experience. Just mm -hmm. we're crying with the, the movie, we're feeling, we're angry, right? right. So if we we're gonna unpack that as far as consciousness goes, we would look at the projector mm -hmm. is the human brain. Okay, if you look mm -hmm. up and you're like, wow, there's not people up there, it's an actual projector. And the film that's spinning, that's actually just a picture that's spinning fast enough to appear as movement 
is your subconscious. It's your memories, it's your story, it's your characters, it's your script, it's your lineage, it's your backstory, it's your future potential, okay? Your subconscious, right? So now we've got, well, we gotta be able to see this. So your super consciousness is what's streaming the light onto the dark screen, projecting mm. your story. Now, here's the twist. Who's sitting in the seat watching the movie? That's the conscious you. The one who's going, no, 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 I don't like this movie. I want a different character. No, 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 I don't like this. Or forget it, I'll just eat popcorn and go on my phone, right? So we have to understand is that when we're manifesting from the seat of the movie theater, then we are asking everything to be different. Mm. And we are mm. asking from a place of lack. Okay, mm -hmm. we know lack, lack equals lack. So if I ask the universe for something, that I'm lacking, you better bet that the universe is going to embed lack into my manifestation because I asked in lack as my state of being was I lack and the universe was like, great. So it gives me what I'm asking for with lack included. So you're like, no. So you get what you desire, but you're lacking. You either have to give up something or there's something going to be attached through lack with, with your manifestation. And that's why it always feels bittersweet. Right. So when we're biohacking, right, we have to first acknowledge that there's four levels of consciousness here and, and the projector and the, and the film and the, the light and the person viewing, observing is all very important, but it cannot change from the perspective of the seat. It has to change from the film. OK, it had the film has to be changed if the characters are going to be different, if the movie is going to be different. You can't just walk out of the theater and go into a romantic comedy mm -hmm. when you're stuck in a horror film. Mm -hmm. Right. Because then you're living someone else's life. Have you noticed you're like, screw this, I'm done. You walk out of the movie theater and then you go be codependent and you go become a rescuer for someone else's life because now you're tending to their movie because you don't like your own. Right. Wow. That's just an analogy. Yeah, right? but so, very real. <laughs> I mean, exactly. Yeah, right. Sure. So we're, we're going to biohack ourselves. We can't do it from the film we're watching. We have to do it from the film that's spinning. Right. And we are going to have to do it inside the projector, the brain. So mm -hmm. every ounce of our biohacking that we're doing in quantum fitness is based in the brain because the brain is the root of not all the consciousness, but it is the receiver then becomes the perceiver. So it receives the data, right? And then it decides who you are. Your brain decides who you are with what it just received. So like, let's say, you know, our eyes see a flower, right? And so I see a flower, consciousness. The last time you saw a flower, you know, you had an allergy attack. Who am I to a flower? Who is a flower to me? Danger. So right. now you're experiencing the flower that you saw that had no meaning, mm -hmm. no danger, but your brain now associates. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, Oh, I got to go home. My head hurts and I don't feel so good. And you're, the, you're again, you're unaware of what the state of being in your mind or brain is based on who you've become. Right. So the biohacking can't, cannot and i've tried trust me it cannot happen through changing the movie it can't you cannot like okay i'm gonna diet and exercise i'm gonna move to a new state i'm gonna cut everyone negative out of my life i'm gonna start over because again all you're doing is starting the movie over with a slight bit of what we call hope mm. thinking that if I start the movie over, it's going to be different this time because I've done spiritual work and I've done meditation and I've done shadow work. And trust me, 10 years, right? And there's still bits of that movie that are still playing. So I'm going, okay, back to the biohacking, back to the biohacking. And anytime anything is in your blind spot, you know, that, that you're not able to like see right. is, is usually coming from something that we decided was either unsafe to see, mm -hmm. too painful to see, or that we were just, you know, we've got to kind of, it's like when you decide to put your keys somewhere so you don't lose them and then you don't remember where you put them. Right. So, you know, that is where we store some of these, these films that continue to project. And, and one thing that I've realized is you cannot cut people out of your life because energy isn't matter. It is a feeling space. 
So when you, even when, when I realized when I wrote quantum fitness and I had this giant epiphany of, of grief, and that's really at the basis of the biohacking is what we're working with grief. Cause it's the one place that we're all terrified to go. Mm -hmm. And we're terrified to like, even though we're doing shadow work, grief to the body is the experience of death. Hmm. And it is the one place that your ego is like off limits. Right. Right. And it is the one place where all of that hurt and broken heart of the past, all those people you cut out, mm -hmm. you cut them out because they hurt you, you know? And yeah, you took your power back to like go away and start over. But guess what? Everything is still within you. Right. And so you're in a new space, but your backpack of rocks called grief or pain just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. And what I realized about density of energy, right? That anything below boredom on the frequency scale, regardless of whose frequency scale you're looking at, whether it's mine or someone else's frequency scale. And I have a pretty like generic one that I like to use that I created. Mm -hmm. Anything below boredom, right? So above boredom is like where you start to kind of get creative and you get higher and joy and excitement. Anything below boredom has a physical mass, a density. It weighs something. Now, it's not a weight that you can like see, but it is a physical density because anything below boredom weighs something. So, you know, the last job that fired you when you worked overtime, you know, the unrequited love, the broken heart, the, you know, the death of a family member, the, the loss of your own power in your relationship. You think that as you move forward, you're not taking that with you. Hmm. You're absolutely taking that with you, mm -hmm. but you're what you're acting in a place of hope and you're chasing and seeking solutions. Right. And then, then the chase becomes in the addiction to the, the seeking becomes the addiction. The meditation becomes the addiction. The you know, the journey work becomes the addiction. And and all along, everything's like we're just staying here in the shadows, like waiting for you to like actually either get sick or stop mm -hmm. because then what happens is when you stop it all right right and right. so i decided that what i would do for quantum fitness is i would just stop i would just be you know we're, we're you're like we're human beings not human doings right. and and when you really if you really want to know what you're manifesting find out what you're being not what you're doing you're doing is usually so that you don't have to feel who you're being Right. It's very like right. mind bender. But the right. doing is I we always feel better when we're trying. We always feel better when we're studying. We always feel better when we're meditating. But meditating, if defined by checking in, should not be a double life. I truly believe that that meditation should be all day, every day, 24 seven, because mm -hmm. everything should be an opportunity to check in that trigger. Right. That missed opportunity, that person being late. Right. Your Wi-Fi not working. So everything, there's no randoms in the universe. Everything is for you within you. So it's like an opportunity to live in a state of meditation and have like you asked me if I knew certain authors. No, because my reality is my my guru. Like mm -hmm. my reality will show me where my alignment is. My reality will show me what I'm manifesting. I don't need to pay a psychic to tell me what I'm manifesting. I can see it right here, right? <laughs> right, right, right. It, it, yeah, I mean, I can see it right here. If this person is not, you know, giving me what I want, right? then right. Where, where does that come from? So ultimately, those four levels of consciousness, I think even when we're on our journey, we think that the person sitting at the movie theater has control. Mm -hmm. And that is only 5% of your potential. So what's the other 95% doing? Right. So then you get exhausted. Right. And and although we're meditating and we're, you know, spiritual drugging and we're doing all of these things, you know, I will share that in the second part of my quantum fitness, I really dive down in deep into the aging process of the human body. And the human body was only designed to to move it into maturity of of three seven year cycles. So 21, the body was like, OK, now what? OK, now what? It was never like, OK, 85 and then you die of cancer, just like mom. Right. We know from epigenetics now that we have a lot of choice in right. what genetics we're turning on and off. But as far as our our bio computer here, most sophisticated system in the universe was not designed for you to get old and die. 
it was designed for you to go through your three seven year cycles of expansion, remember who you are, and then get in the driver's seat, right? Mm -hmm. And have enough energy and vitality to, to know what you don't want and to have enough time spent to know who you are and then take over the driving. And then, I mean, we always think, oh, I wish I would have known this at 21. I wish I would have known this when I was younger, right? At 46 years old, it's like, wow, if I would have known here what I knew then, like, can you imagine how expansive your reality could be? Right. But it, it still can be because, again, the body is doing basically what you say to do, whether you're doing it by choice or default right. or, or, you know, watching someone else or listening to your own genetics that died, you know, tragically. You know, if, if you're not paying attention and driving, someone is. Yeah. So you mentioned something that a couple things. One is remember who you are. What do you mean by that? I mean, that that's a that's a powerful statement. What does that mean? Remember who you are. Well, we know that energy doesn't die. It changes forms. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the base of what we are is we are energy. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're a certain type of energy. We are the energy of desire. OK. And this energy of desire is all about expansion. And it's all about knowing yourself through experience. OK, mm -hmm. so imagine that I am just energy of desire in the universe and I am all that is and I'm connected to the source and whatever, you know, name you want to give that. Mm -hmm. Like I am a fractal. Like imagine that mm -hmm. the most beautiful glass in the world just shatters. Right. Mm -hmm. You're you're a you're a shred of that shatter, which means mm -hmm. that you are still the same compound of genetic of source. So right, right. God spark, whatever you want to call it. And one of our ultimate desires as that spark is to know thyself, right? Mm -hmm. And so the best way to know thyself is to actually embody and create something that feels real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, inherently this, this, genetic or I would say more of a um, energy creator is very feminine in nature because mm -hmm. it's vision, it's imagination, it's yeah, desire, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw in there real quick because I love studying words mm -hmm. and the Me word too. creation, the, mm -hmm. the word cre, like creation, creature, all of that is actually a feminine noun. It is, it's right. Noun. Yeah, it's like and, when I heard that first time, I was like, what? Yeah, I know. I love studying that. Let, let yeah. geeks me out too. I'm right yeah. there with you. <laughs> right. So that is inherently feminine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, matter density is inherently masculine, mm -hmm. right? Because that the formation of density is, is all about the action of realizing the desire. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I am spirit that desires to be embodied and to touch and experience and, you know, become more, right? Because I can see myself through a contrast, right? Like art would just like all white art, but you add a little color in there. Now right. there is something. Right. So we, we love the shadow. We love the density. We love the, the slowing everything down so that, we can use time and we can use space to to become right and to choose and to discern and and then and then experience right mm. you know you're always like well you don't take it with you well you do take those experiences with you you do and every time you have an embodied experience whether it's on this plane or another plane you're always taking that with you and just like i have my grandmother's genetics she has left behind the evidence of her experience that is beckoning me to be more. Is mm -hmm. asking me where she was asking for help and asking for love and asking for change. Then I will in and go, yep, I can pick up that. And I will then ask for my state. I will be more. So we're all kind of like using this. I, I call it like highway intersections. We're all mm -hmm. intersecting with each other's desire and and sometimes desire needs to be determined by things that you're not interested in experiencing. I mean, you right. really don't know what you want until you see what you don't. Right. So to a spirit or to a soul is so exciting, right? Mm -hmm. Until you get here. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then you're like, get me off this ghetto planet, right? Right, right, and then, right, right. And then the thing is, is the one thing I'll be teaching in my second series is 
that there, there, so far there's no, there's no, there is no truth been written about manifestation completely 100% true. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why, because I have had the opportunity to not just be the spiritual teacher and the intuitive, like I'm a, I, I study neurology, I study biochemistry, early childhood development, um, genetics. So there's every area of science that needs to intersect to our true understanding of manifestation. All right. Mm -hmm. And what we, what we all know, every, nobody would deny this is that there are two hemispheres of your brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you've ever had, you know, cranial sacral, your, your person will say, Hey, your brain is breathing normally. And you're like, what? It's breathing. Okay. And in order for that, you know, little tiny pineal gland in the center point that we say, oh, that's where our Kundalini is going to open up and we're going to know everything is, is right in the center of that relationship. That's a key word I just used. Mm -hmm. Masculine, feminine relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in order to spark the pineal gland, which is basically going to create immortality when we get this right. It moves in the energy flow of infinity, because if you've ever loved someone, you you love them forever. Right. Right. It, it doesn't go away. Like, right. I love you forever. I love you always. It's like it's never ending. So the relationship that the way that the human body was designed was love wins. And when you can get into the love frequency of your own masculine and feminine hemisphere, right. you will activate. Hmm. No one is using this in manifestation. All right. But I will tell you that this is at the center point of my fitness program, because, again, if you've ever lifted weights and one side is heavier. Right. And we know from having injuries that the side that's injured is is, you know, atrophied. But the other side's taking all the slack. Right. Hmm. OK, right. well, right. we got to think about that in brain in the brain hemisphere. So you're you're. Your feminine energy and your masculine energy were put into this body to manifest everything you desire, which means you had built in Wi-Fi, like your own connection. You don't need a channel. You don't need meditation. It's built in. Right. And you have feminine, which is I desire. I visualize. I imagine. Now, her job is to, is to seduce. And I say this completely. <laughs> the masculine side of her her own brain mm. and woo him in and say look at what we desire right and through that seduction of desire because naturally a byproduct of masculine energy is not intuitive it's matter right. of fact it's black right. it's white it's wrong right. right it does not have intuition built in right. until it falls in love with desire mm. There's the word love again. So now I am using manifestation correctly. I am desiring within. I am not desiring. We don't have this. I am saying I am so abundant in this that if I don't share this, I'm going to explode. Mm -hmm. So instead of I am lacking, right? Mm -hmm. I am in desire to share. I am desiring time. I am desiring freedom so that I can share all that I am versus I need this and I need that. Right. And how come you can't read my mind? You know, and he's going, oh, right. <laughs> right. You know? right. Right. And so again, there's two love languages of this relationship, share and touch. Mm. We know that men, every man love language is touch. Right. Mm -hmm. And a feminine wants to share and be heard and seen and understood. That is her true love language, right? right? So those two love languages have to intersect, which means that if her desire does not touch the masculine side of her own brain in her own design, the Wi-Fi won't turn on. Wow. Okay. Now, when this sinks, imagine, and you understand zero point energy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So zero point energy is when the infinity goes from the right or left hemisphere and then it sinks right in the middle. Boop. There's what we call zero point, And that is creation or orgasm. Mm -hmm. Okay. When there's a unity of the masculine and feminine energy that comes together and it says, I desire, and it says, and I desire for your dream to be realized through us. 
So now wild horses cannot keep your masculine brain from providing, protecting, fixing, building, moving mountains, right. quantum leaping, healing bodies. Because again, that masculine is matter materialized. So mm -hmm. a feminine can only dream. The masculine can only do. And when they don't have the same goal or the same desire, well, look at every relationship. Mm -hmm. It's a shit show because he doesn't really feel included, right? He's not getting touched anymore unless he's a good boy. And she's pissed because, you know, he can't read her mind. And, you know, she's got daddy issues. He's got mommy issues and they're taking it out on each other. And I've done this a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of experience in that. And when we, when we really realize that, that everything that we're manifesting is from this love affair, that I'm either having with my own hardware to, to manifest reality because the feminine cannot manifest into real. That's all she wants is something real. I just want it to be real. And he says, I want a purpose. I want a purpose. Get me so excited that I have a purpose. Right. And so her job was to get here and we think, oh, self-love is like bubble baths and losing weight. No, self-love is this right here. Because when this relationship comes back online and we begin to heal what we had to turn down, and I'll share that next, is that everything you've ever wanted starts to manifest, but it's not bittersweet, okay? Mm -hmm. Because this is what happened to me. And I, I have no problem sharing this because as a biohacker, it's like, hey, you gotta fail. Like I'm very proud of my failures because they they open up that search and they humble you and, and it asks you to look deeper in different ways. And so every one of my failures has been the missing piece for me. Mm -hmm. So what I realized is that when I was a little girl, my dad left at, at two, right? He left us for another woman. And, and so in my eyes, you know, dad was, he was my everything. Like he was the one who actually understood me. And there was a love language there that I didn't have with my mom. She was, she was very alpha energy. She was very masculine. Mm -hmm. So when he left, she even got more masculine. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I had two brothers who were also very masculine mm -hmm. and they were very dominating. So, you know, in any pack mentality, this is primal, right? right. You're going to evaluate your own survival. Right. And here mm -hmm. I am, you know, the whole universe inside of me, like dying to share, like, love and kindness and be the star. And everyone's like, uh, no, right. Not even. Right, right. So, you know, when I'm looking at, I'm looking at my toolbox at like five years old going, well, I'm not allowed to do this. So that goes, I'm not allowed to do this. So that goes, I'm not allowed to do this. So that goes. And basically a lot of my toolbox that I had to turn down mm. or disconnect was my masculine energy. Right. And so, you know, I, I'm not allowed to protect myself. I can't talk back, right? I'm not allowed to create anything that I can keep because everything gets taken away, mm -hmm. right? There's no consistency. There's no purpose for him. So I just got, my feminine energy just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, here's the trap. And I see this a lot with every one of my students is divine feminine can do everything. I mean, she can. Mm -hmm. I'm a CEO. I have two companies. I have four kids. You know, I make a million dollars a year easy and I can do it all. I, I, re I really can, but I can't. All right. Because what I realized is that I cannot, while this is dysfunctional, have that person, that, that partner, like that, that version of what I desire manifest. I can have every, everything around it except what I want the most, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, you get the house, you get the money and you get the body and you're like, well, this is cool, but where is he, right? right? Where's the playmates? Where are the people that, you know, and I built my own community, so I have friends all over the world, but you know, I'm talking about this true intimate connections because you know, your family's out. They're the, like, you're the, you're, <laughs> right. they are literally right. your biggest hecklers, right? right? right. right. Yep, for sure. mean, they're the ones who are fear campaigning you and, and you're just like, <laughs> that's fear campaigning. Yeah. yeah. So, so what I realized is that I'm like, you know, I really got frustrated. This last show I was like, what's the heck? Like, I, I know. And then when I started to kind of look, pull the strings of my masculine, 
you know, I had to get kind of basic and get real human here and start looking at human functions of masculine primal energy and the purpose of man. Prov provide, protect, right? Mm -hmm. Fix, build, yep. Yep. invent. Yep. Well, in order for a male to be an inventor, he would need to be intuitive. Mm -hmm. And in order for a man to use his true intuition, the whole universe, universe he would have to be connected to his divine feminine. Yep. And because I just had to get more feminine and more feminine, you know, I would say that I wasn't boy crazy, but I've been love crazy since I was five years old. Where's my person? Where's my person? Where's my knight in shining armor? Mm -hmm. I have been on this search for him, right? Mm -hmm. Married twice, four kids. Nope, that's not right. And what I realized is that I am searching for what I am lacking. And I kept manifesting not what was going to fill the void. I kept manifesting the emptiness in another person, like not being seen, not being heard, abandoned, rejected. And I was like, yeah. So that was so amazing for me because, you know, my soulmate is my soul's mate here. So what I decided to do is I started to go a huge like rehabilitation on my own human brain, which seems like very not spiritual, but mm -hmm. you'll see in the coming year, 2022 is going to be an interesting year for everyone because we call it in the etherics, the catch 22. Mm. And it is you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So you better start just living for you. Right. right. And getting this right. Eyes on your own paper. So I decided that I would, you know, take the humiliation of another failed relationship and dust myself off. And this time, instead of jumping back into the game and and, you know, well, I, I learned a lot and I got my lesson. I said, no, I'm going to I'm going to see where I'm faulty in my hardware. So the biohacking began and I realized that, you know, in order to manifest just here, just here and turn coherence of the brain and the heart, which actually make a perfect triangle. Mm -hmm. Once this and this fall in love, the child is happy and the child mm -hmm. is the true soul. Right. And you know that when your parents aren't doing well, you're going to try everything you can to get them on the same page. Right. right. Yep. So when this, when these two hemispheres come back together, the child lights up and the child, like literally like Iron Man, like boom. And now we are online as our true God self in human body. How badass is that? Yeah, I love so that. not only is, are we, not only are we <clears throat> lining up for potential to have the most powerful relationships, mm -hmm. healed bodies, knowledge of universe, we are actually going to be capable of super, superhuman powers mm -hmm. because when the child or this, the heart chakra, which is stays in non-duality lights up and connects with the human mother and father brain, the pineal gland starts to release different hormones. So imagine that baseline adrenaline, it gives you 600% strength. Imagine that the pineal gland actualized gives you 6,000. So is that, is in, I've studied a little bit about this. Is mm -hmm. that where the DMT is released is out of the pineal gland? Um, well, yeah, I mean, DMT is is in your lungs. It's created in your pineal gland in certain parts of, of your your body. Okay. But DMT is really just your connection to spirit. I mean, it's how mm -hmm. plants talk to the, each other. It's not really, that's not what's giving you your superpowers. Your superpowers is actually in the adrenaline. It's in the oxytocin. It's in the melatonin. It's in the serotonin. And it's in those chemicals mm -hmm. that the body now says spirit is in command mm. now let me show you what the opposite of this looks like and this is humanity mm -hmm. okay i go on my spiritual journey which we do okay mm -hmm. right? i'm i'm a seeker i'm a studier i'm a teacher i'm a philosopher you know and I'm, I'm i'm a knower and i you know i'm great at teaching others and i'm mm, okay at living right mm. i'm great at helping people make money but you know i'm great at doing this but you know, it's not quite. And this was my story. You know, I was just like, mm -hmm. keep teaching, keep teaching, keep teaching, helping people. And there's still things that are wonky, you know, and so I'd go back and, and work on it. But what I realized is that imagine me. So I am bloated divine feminine, like too much desire, too much vision, too much imagination. So, you know, my intuition is off the chain. I can see you. I can know you. I can see you. No problem. But if my masculine is turned down, mm -hmm. I need a co-creator, mm -hmm. don't I? 
Yep. Because I can't be real without a co-creator. Right. So guess who I use? I use the outside world. <laughs> now, what is codependency? Mm -hmm. Do you really think that your paycheck is coming from your job? You know, it's like, do is it's like, let, let me just show you something. So it's like when I'm co when I my masculine is turned down because I've had to turn it down. Mm -hmm. and my feminine is too big, then feminine energy gets this alpha mentality and she does not like to receive help. She does not like anybody seeing her like hurting. She doesn't want to see, that's why I've been just showing my suffering so much lately because the bigger the divine feminine gets, the more, the more of the mask that she has to wear mm -hmm. because she's afraid someone will know she's feminine. She's like, I had to become this man inside and therefore I'm afraid of receiving. Yeah. So I have a question. You said something that's really, really important that I'd like you to clarify the distinction of alpha and masculine. Mm. So, what, so well, how would you define the two of those? Okay. Well, ma to me, masculine is, ma is a materialization of matter. It's action. It's taking action of desire, right? Ma okay. Masculine is, is the, the doing and the acting and the being of desire. Alpha is to me is the leader. Mm, okay. It. Now we know in my family, my mom was the alpha. Okay. And if you've ever watched like lions, the way it works is the young bucks will start, you know, getting bigger and that testosterone will start to, and they'll challenge dad. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mom will come over and kick their ass, you know, because it's like, right. but they learn, okay, this is my place. Right. Well, see, we did that as children too. This is my place. This is what I'm allowed. And the hardest part was, is when we come in, like, you know, as, as, as little babies, this is fully connected. So we are so much more powerful than our parents. Mm -hmm. And they perceive this as, as an unconscious primal threat. Right. Yep. And they're like, I got to put you in your place as soon as you can feed yourself. As soon as you can wipe your own ass, your party is over. Right. It's like, <laughs> seriously. And right. then you have to fall in rank. Mm -hmm. But see, the brain starts to formulate a more like a less malleability at age seven. Remember how I said three, seven year cycles. Right, right. So at age seven, your brain's like, this is what we're allowed to be. Mm -hmm. Right. That does never stops your desire. So you chase your desire and your brain whips you back like a noose around your neck. Ten right. steps forward, ten steps back. So then you go on your journey. You start learning manifestation and you're manifesting, but you're manifesting with whatever you're lacking outside of you. Now, when I hurt this arm, this arm's got to do more. Right. Right. So imagine that my masculine inside of me is completely emasculated. And you understand that word, right? Mm -hmm. It's like the disempowered man, right? His, his purpose is, is rejected and not appreciated. He is not allowed to be himself, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is if I have emasculated my own masculine energy, then I am going to need quite a big masculine energy outside of me to compensate for the bigness of who I have become, which is basically a big fat lie, right? Mm -hmm. This big feminine energy that can do everything, cannot do everything. And wow. it takes, it takes just one breakup or, you know, one accident to have all the masks fall off and go, okay, it makes me feel weak when I have to receive. It makes me feel, you know, and so then it, it creates such a separation of resistance, mm -hmm. but then it's weird because somehow you need it. Right. You know, I have my clients go, oh no, like I'm abundant. And I'm like, where's your money come from? Right. And they're like, oh, the government. And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> because again, it's like, what happens if they disappear? Right. Are, are you still going to feel abundant? Right. Right. Well, right. and they're like, well, and I'm like, I would, because the thing is, is if I create my own abundance, mm -hmm. then I would already be projecting and reflecting the new version of, of the economics and, within me. Yeah. And that's such a massive distinction, right. like what happened with COVID, right? right. Like people, when, once you understand how to create your own economy and you can create out of your own, it, it's a, it's a whole different platform. Right. Yeah. So well, that, and you're, you're really creating your own reality. So it's not even your own economy. It's the, it's the reality where, where you are abundant regardless. Mm -hmm. Your abundance is going to like, pop online, whatever the new economics are. So you shared something uh, on your 
Instagram post. And because you shared it on your Instagram post, I would like you to expand on it a little bit if you would. Because the thing I love about you, Jessica, is you do the work, right? Like, just like you were saying is we teach and we teach and we teach. And then we, on the backside of it, are we put on this persona. Mm -hmm. And so I love the fact that, like you said, when we were talking before we got on here, that you are the guinea pig. Like, this is, you do the work before you put it out there. And I absolutely love that because it, you're coming from experience. You're coming from this is my truth because I've gone through this, right? So you talked about these last seven days and, and talking about these power to eyelashes. And for the women, if they want to know, you can ask you. But talk about that grief process of some of what's been coming up for you and how you've moved through that. Um, and then somebody asked, how do you connect both feminine and masculine? But I would like you to expand on a little bit because as you as we were talking, people put so much effort in not looking at their grief. We know it, it's an addiction and that's why my second part is is called addiction mm -hmm. because addiction is what we use as relief mm -hmm. or or a buffer mm -hmm. between what we don't have and what and what we feel. So mm -hmm. an addiction, like I said, it can be seeking, it can be searching, it can be saying addiction is not alcohol and drugs that much. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know more people that are addicted to meditation at this point than they are drugs and alcohol. Right. Right. So we could spend all day talking about that. Mm -hmm. for, but for me, I, I'm going to cry, which here we go. Um, and, and it. It's vulnerability. <laughs> it's vulnerability because so, so one of the things is, as I have been really diving into, you know, my very bloated feminine reality of mm -hmm. being the breadwinner and being the mom and being the CEO and the savior and, and con continuing to track men in my life that either are needing me to be the breadwinner, which then is is a trigger because then I'm like coward, right? And then it's like, mm -hmm. and now I can actually reject you, right? Because you're not as not you're not a you're not you're not even a, enough man that I I'm a bigger man than you are, and that right. has been a really big turnoff for me. And I didn't realize as though like doing the love bombing thing, you know, and 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 helping them with their wounding. Is not necessarily what they need what they need is for the emasculation to be removed and for them to step into their their purpose as a man right and it's very different purpose of a man in business and purpose of a man with a woman right. so and and that was kind of my my level of, of manifestation so i always considered my dad a coward for leaving his family for another woman like it was like that was like dad's a coward OK, and then I had to turn my masculine energy down to live in my very alpha based home. So I lived in my imagination. Right. Nobody could take that. So so that was that was me. So I was a, I was a cowardly man inside. Right. Yeah. What do you think I'm attracted to? And I, guys, if I've dated you, you're not cowards like you're not. But it's like that was my perception. Mm -hmm. Because reject to, right when you're yeah, the smartest right. person in the room and you right, know right. everything, it's very hard for someone to be able to to be more than you. Mm -hmm. And I have like out of out of kind of need had to become more for my kids, for my business, for the world. And mm -hmm. and what my job was is to to heal the side of myself that can also help me, right? And mm -hmm. and I had all these belief systems buried in my subconscious about men, like you know, they weren't evolving as fast as us or, you know, there's a lot of like false light out there of men who are, are like just trying to get laid and saying, hey, I, I knew you in a past life, you know, and it, it's like your, your pickup lines are, are awesome. But, you know, I mean, it's like very strong women usually end up like needing to be in control. Mm -hmm. And so after this last relationship that literally was like the missing piece for me, I, I thought, okay, let me look at the common denominator of what my ego believes about each one of these men, hmm. right? And, you know, I, I'm attracted to manly man, like the alpha, because I feel like I'm an alpha. I want an alpha, right? I'm attracted to the outwardly, but no, I'm attracted secretly to their cowardice because that's what I am. Hmm. And then that would be what would destroy the relationship because that cowardice would start pulling me into that suffering. And so when I realized that this responsibility is on me here, I really got to take a look at, at my heart and, and where I'm out of alignment and where I'm separated from myself. If I continue to, to keep attracting the wrong partner. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, quantum fitness, I'm, I'm working every day to rehabilitate this, this brain of mine. And, 
you know, get my balls back. If you guys have seen my my um, <laughs> if you guys have seen my um, soccer balls, I love it. I love right? It. My soccer balls. They're yes, it's we'll like balls that. back, right? Yeah, and and working with them. Remember touch, right? And share. So we're using a lot of touch therapy for grief reliefs. And someone asked how you reconnect the brains. Touch. So um, what I've been doing is is going back to that root that root grief of dad. But you know, I've I've done that grief work a lot, but mm-hmm. never from the way of of what it's turned me into. You mm-hmm. know, it's like the person that rejects you and abandons you is 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 usually what you become, unfortunately, subconsciously. And so, you know, my dad and I, like, um, he abandoned us. And so when I was 35, I decided to go search for him Mm -hmm. and to, you know, see if my mom was like telling the truth. Like, you know, she said, hey, he doesn't want you. He wanted you guys aborted, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm the, I'm like, no, he, he just wants me. He doesn't want you guys. You know, it's like that fairy tale syndrome that all women have, right? right? Like the number one fantasy of a woman is to be married to like Prince Charming. And so, of course, that was what I I had, like, as my hope drug Mm -hmm. that I was going to find my dad and, you know, he was going to embrace us. And and when I met him when I was 35, like he seemed slightly interested, but not what I was looking for. Right. His wife at the time, she was very alpha and kind of kicked me out of the nest very quickly. And Mm -hmm. so I thought, well, it's because he's not proud of me. Mm -hmm. So let me go make something of myself. This is where the grief is. Wow. Wow. So like, that's when my whole journey started. Like I did my awakening. I like read all the books and it was like, I want him to be proud of me. So Hmm. interesting going on this journey. I decided last week, well, 11 days ago that I'm going to reach out again. Cause you know what? I've made something to myself. Like I'm helping thousands of people to send. Like I'm winning awards for spiritual work. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I have an academy that's in 103 countries. I think that, I think that would make a father proud, and Ooh. you're gonna make me lose it. So I, I write to him because I don't know where he's at, but I have his email address, and um, all right, and I'm like, I'm like having this fantasy all over again of this child that's like. He's going to come see my work. He's going to be proud of me. Like we're going to, this is it. This is going to help me with my male issues. Right. And he writes back and says, no, thanks. Wow. Right. But this time wow. it was like, I did not use, I just need to be this or I just need to have this or I need to be prettier or skinnier or more successful or, you know, do more shadow work. Like this time I just like embraced it. Like I let it all just like destroy me and my eyelashes fell off right now. (laughs) (laughs) And, and it was, you know, I, you step back and you go, wow, Jess, how do you manifest this after all the work? Because again, you know, these are my students' questions. Mm-hmm. I'm very transparent in my classroom. Like they know every, they know, it's TMI. It's TMI. Because again, you know, I want them to understand that, that we are very human here having this experience in these spiritual spaces. And and part of our discovery is our failures. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And what I realized is that this is a man who's, who's probably never really been able to look at the at his own actions and this is a person whose heart is probably very blocked i mean to live your family your heart has to be very blocked mm-hmm. it's very also from what i hear in the, the pipeline very very caught up in the whole darkness of the planet and the underground and survival and the, the earth's you know going to hell and right. doesn't really probably know anything about me or and and so once i got on the other side and it was very i will say it was torture to not run, to not, to not think, to not call someone. It's like, think of all the addictions right there, right there. Okay. Um, you know, first bypass it and they get angry at him. Could have done that. Could have called someone for relief. Like, tell me, tell me I'm not, you know, tell me I'm, I'm good enough, you know, or mm-hmm. I could have, you know, searched and become more, right. Done more shadow work. These are all little addictions. And instead of just letting grief, the ghost of grief that's been chasing me my whole life just like just take over right mm-hmm. like you know like a possession 
-hmm. and just welcome it in and and not resist it. And that was it was so hard because there were so many little booby traps built in to resist this, like take this, you'll feel better. Take this, you'll feel better. Say this, you'll feel better. Listen to this, you'll feel better. And it was like, I don't want to feel better. So for for about 12 hours, I sat in that. My students haven't even heard this yet because they were like, they know I wrote the letter to dad. They don't know the feedback. And the next morning I woke up and first energy we know manifest into the body. So that next day I woke up left side of my body. I couldn't move it. The worst migraine I've ever had. The gut, my gums were swollen. My eyes were swollen. This was just yesterday. Wow. To the point where it was like, I felt like the half of my body had the flu. Half. The other side was fine. And I'm like, it's the worst pain I've ever been in. And I, my body's like, take the Tylenol, take this, take that, take the CBD, take this. And I'm going, nope. I'm literally going to let the grief go all the way through. Right. I squirmed a lot. Right. <laughs> And, and, and so what I teach in, in quantum fitness is, is to do something with the energy instead of resist it, make something with it, like create life in death in the, in the moment of the trigger. And that's one of our big steps in the, in the first course is to embrace grief, but, but don't just let it devour you. Like once it sets in, bring it, make life out of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I got through that worst part of it. And then I, I literally thought this is I'm, I'm literally going to journal this in real time as I'm experiencing everything. And this is going to go into the book, right? Mm -hmm. This book that I'm writing, because now it's my gift to letting people know that it's not about fixing the relationship. It's about it's about knowing that while I was feeling all of that, I didn't feel alone while mm -hmm. I was feeling all of that pain. I didn't feel the need to ask for help outside of me. I didn't feel right. I definitely had ego addictive things going help 911. But the real me that was there that I've been working on for so long was like, let it just let it be you and be through you and just be your state of being of I accept this. Hmm. Right. Because honestly, he's never been there. It's not like new information. Right, right, and, but right. I've never fully accepted it because to accept something, right, means it's real. Mm. And and who am I if this is real? Right. And I go, I'm not changed. Right. But it was the most powerful closure because the weight that we're carrying, we think it's, oh, I'm going to get my dad back or I'm going to find the guy. But what if the grief that I'm carrying is that I really know this the whole time, but I don't want to accept it? Right. And I mean, we know that words are, are shit and actions. Hello. Right. <laughs> my right? Yeah. No, I mean, and, it's how, who are we? And that's one of the questions I ask my clients is who are you pretending this person is not? Exactly. Right. Like exactly. And that know, is an addiction yeah. of, of buying into the potential of someone mm -hmm. versus what they are. Right. And, and do I think my dad is bad or evil? No, I think my dad is asleep. And I think that what just like when, when I came in and as a bright young star from the heavens, right? I probably pissed everybody off then. And I can guarantee you I'm pissing my family off now. Mm -hmm. So I say we always have to return to the scene of the crime or the scene of the trauma to deactivate it. And one of our, our, our biohacking processes is your, your life's manifesting. Haven't you noticed this year especially? It's like you keep ending up in certain places where you're like this again, right? This, right. Your, your, your higher self, you are bringing you back to unresolved moments in time so that you can close it out. Otherwise you're carrying the baggage of it, whether it's hope or mystery or lack of closure or you know unrequited love or unfulfilled goals and desires, right? Yeah. And instead of just dealing with the acceptance that, that this person who created me Right. Or at least my body doesn't want anything to do with me. Maybe that is because he doesn't want to do anything with himself. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it was like, I don't want to spiritually bypass this and make it. Oh, you know, make excuses for it right. because there's no excuse. But at the same time, fully accept that. Well, guess what I can do? I can take the potential that he gave me in my genetics and I can make something that he couldn't. 
I could take all of his unfulfilled hopes and dreams because he started off as a preacher. Hello. He started off as an artist, wow. right? And now he is very hermited in his reality where he's not doing anything with any of his talent. And guess what I can do? He may, I might not have him in my physical reality to, you know, have him read stories and call him daddy. But what I can do is the, the, gift, the gift of genetics that he gave me to tell the truth of the word, right? Or to be an artist. I can take what he could not do and I can fulfill our family lineage mm. through my own love. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's so it's beautiful. like, I still love him, but I'm just picking up where he couldn't confront. Right. And so that is where it all changed for me. And it was like all the tears like turned into intuition or like more like inspired action because now it's like, Ooh, Oh, I learned how to do this from him. I learned how this, I can do this. And I mean, even my ability to talk for 12 hours straight, I know that was a gift from him. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when we're born as impasse and sensitive people, we're born into families where they say, I can't, but right. you can. And we are the seed planted to piss everyone off. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that we're the seed, but we're in manure, right? right. <laughs> we're in the fertilizer. And, and that is not something that they know how to love the way that we want to be loved with all of our heart. I, I love that. And it, it's interesting because having this conversation, there's so many synchronicities going on within myself of having this conversation with you and what you're saying. And a word that's been coming up a lot for me is the word familiar. Mm. Like our biggest fear, one of our biggest fears is to be separated from our family, right? right. Which, which is Familia. what you're talking, yes. right? mm -hmm. And so you look at the word familiar, it's family layer, like this mm -hmm. is our nest, right? So we get so caught up in these illusions of what we think it should be and that we, come, it, we get addicted to that and that ends up becoming the inertia that right. keeps us from stepping into. Right. And what you're talking about is just because when you first started talking, you talked about lineage. And I was like, I would love to hear, you know, how that and how you've gone through this 10 day process of doing the grief and what comes out of the other side of that has just been a catalyst. And now it's like, now what is Jessica going to create? I mean, well, again, the more that this harmonizes, mm -hmm. right. And again, it's, it's not from spiritual study or meditation or activations. It's, it's getting real and, and learning the hardware that was so brilliantly designed to give us the ability to get into a kind of blueprint, but then learn how to code and then code whatever you want, right? right? From a unique space and, and, and then co-create within ourselves. See, here's the thing. We are here to co-create with ourselves. Then we're here to share with others. Mm -hmm. We're here to share the abundance and the freedom and and the one thing that most people don't know about manifestation is that feminine brain or feminine energy is space and it's abundance. Mm -hmm. She is abundant with space of desire. Okay. Notice how women are always trying to fill the space, right? And men are time and freedom. Okay. Hmm. Now, this is where you can see right away where you're not in alignment. Right. Which one of those abundance, space, time, freedom are you triggered by? This is where you're turned down. Right. So when you're working, when I'm working with someone, it's like, you know, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time. Oh, I have to wait. I have to wait. I have to wait. I don't have no space. I don't have no space. You know, I got five kids. I got this. I got this. And I'm going, I see. But all this happening is either divine feminine is doing too much and the divine masculine has been turned down or because, again, think about it. Think about the, the, the perfection of creation. Hmm. Spirit will use space to become, right? The abundance of all that there is in the, in the quantum field to know and, and, and act, right? Time to build it, to become it, to demonstrate it, to all these things. And then the freedom to be authentic. Hmm. And you'll see that when we're manifesting, we're manifesting usually for one of those, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We're actually asking the universe for what our hardware already is. Like, give me some time. And, and, and the universe is like, um, it's right here. <laughs> give me some space, it's right here. But we are like, we've, we've been taught because of this alpha energy of the collective 
you know, and the collective is is very um, the the collective unconscious reality that we are mm -hmm. seated in is masculine with their feminine turned off. Mm -hmm. Okay, black and white still need divine feminine, but it's usually coming from empowering or like disempowering and enslaving, raping, right? It's coming from this like very aggressive, like the billionaires, you know, they got women in cages, not as partners. Right. So then you look at mm -hmm. the sensitive impasse on the planet, like you and me, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be more dominant feminine energy to balance the masculine. Again, when your arms hurt, you gotta pick up the slack. So we came in saying, okay, we'll be a little bit more feminine for a while. Mm -hmm. But then we got to balance ourselves out. And then that's when you're like, I'm getting boundaries this year, you know, and I'm not being a rescuer anymore. And so we start to get our balls back a little bit. And and that's men and women. Right. And then we start to become the co-creator of ourselves because the coherence between the brain and the heart need to be synchronized by the zero point energy of the pineal gland in order to manifest purely here. Mm -hmm. If I am not turned on or balanced, right? Balanced. Mm -hmm. Then I have to co-create out there, which means I need the government. I need a guru. I need the books. Right. I mean, I have the infinite universe right here. And if I need to read a book, right, that is telling me that my hardware is broken, right? Or mm -hmm. I, and all that's happened is we're never broken. We can't break. We have a belief being the lie belief right. that that I am lacking something mm -hmm. unworthy, worth less, right? There's the words again. Right. And I, so what I do is I go on a search for the part of me that I'm lacking and I'm attracted to it. You see this? We cannot trust our feelings. We cannot trust our attractions when this is all wonky. This is marketing one-on-one right. -on -one right here. I am. <laughs> and this is like, this has been my reality since I've been writing quantum fitness. And I've been teaching metaphysics and quantum fitness and quantum biology for 10 years. Right. And it, well, it wasn't until the masculine and feminine, like I really sat and laid out with, okay, what, you know, if we got two parts of the brain, right. And I always prided myself on being less logical and less analytical. I really prided myself on being able to live in the etheric space. Can't really get none of your shit done. You know, you a lot of law projects laying around, right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of space taken up, right, right. but your time is like, my time's running out or you're pissing away time. You're in an abusive relationship with time and your freedom hmm, is always taken away. And we were designed to co-create with this per this perfect system that was created with the seven chakras and the perfect heart that stays in non-duality and everything related through time, space, awareness, and these two parts, mother and father, right? Mm -hmm. Getting along, marriage counseling time. That's fit. quantum fitness, by the way, is marriage counseling. So, <laughs> and then, and then, cause the child is unhappy and it's in an mm -hmm. orphanage. Right. Right. And we've done all this inner child work. We've done all this shadow work. And, and it's funny because if you really look at yourself as an empath that is sensitive, guaranteed that you're going to have an issue with that icky divine masculine out there, or you're going to have a problem with the overpowering women, mm -hmm. right? And so what my last relationship told me was he was a, it was the first relationship that I had ever had who was, I felt like an equal. Okay. And if you guys, if I dated you before, I don't mean you're not an equal, just, I mean, <laughs> there's my disclaimer. <laughs> I've probably dated all of you by now, but no, um, he was very, I mean, intelligent to the point where my mind was blown. Like mm -hmm. he was smarter than me, which I loved. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was worth a lot more than I was financially, very strong, very driven, very, very, very purpose-minded. And I, I really latched on to that, but uh, you know, surrounded by all those millions of dollars was a feminine that was completely turned down, like mm. completely turned his feminine side of his brain was completely turned down. So although he had a large amount of abundance, he felt in scarcity. Mm. He felt like he needed more. OK, like it wasn't enough. And for me, I'm like, woohoo, you know, it's always enough, you know, and, and that, so that was very like kind of a challenge. And then when it came to women, he had bad opinions about women, like in his subconscious, the ways that like objectifying, like they're just not that smart. Right. And so it was interesting to see that I thought men were cowards in my subconscious, 
not openly, outwardly, because I love men, I've been, you know, fall in love with every one of them my whole life. But internally, they're all cowards. Internally, he was saying, you know, women are nothing but whores, basically. Look at your Instagram. You're always naked on there. Right. And these were some of the conflicts that we were having. And I was like, you know, and, and what I realized is that what a perfect match was to manifest the, the exact counterpoint to my weakness. And all we did was trigger each other and trigger, because again, you know, I need what he's lacking. He needs what I'm lacking. Of course, that's what attraction is. And then by a byproduct of that is complete destruction. And the greatest thing about this whole thing is that I started writing quantum fitness at the tail end of, of our, our physical relationship. We're still, we're still great friends. Like he's going through his version of, of therapy and I'm doing quantum fitness and we talk every day, but we know that we're literally like two opposing forces, like kryptonite, kryptonite. And therefore when we are, are balanced, you know, that, that we'll be great co-creators, you know, at, with each other, but not co-creators for our personal reality, if that makes sense. Like we'll be able to co-create in physical reality, but not. And that, and this is the first one that, you know, that even though we were attacking each other's like belief systems all the time, we were, we couldn't hate each other. It was so weird. It was like, I love you so much. I hate you, you know? And, and but we realized that it was a, a spirit love. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like, let me marry you love. And that's why revisiting all of these other points in time, it was like, I felt like quantum fitness was the ghost of Christmas past, future and, and present where I could see where I was using these little addictions of hope or relief or more study mm -hmm. to basically not feel. Wow. So yeah, I just talked your whole ear off. Sorry about that. No, like, your whole ear just fell off. Like, we're going, well, we're, we're over an hour here. <laughs> so Why not? to go for like an, another two hours. Dad, Matt, he was a preacher, right? <laughs> right. No, yeah. this is. Mm -mm. And what you just said about attraction is what's lacking in the other. Right. And what's it is. In That's why you get pissed when they're not your, you know, twin flame anymore. And right. Yeah. yeah. This is rich stuff. So. Um, you've talked about it a few times. How can people find out more about who you are and this quantum fitness that, and, and so they can get their balls. They can get your balls back or right. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Or you can get your heart back, whichever one you're lacking. Right. right, right. Um, I mean, I would say my community is probably 90% women, probably as yours, you know, it's because again, it seems like the divine feminine is more in touch with their need to be mm -hmm. more. And men are like, oh, I'm perfect who I am, you know, right. but they're waking up. And so it's great. And men and women would benefit so much from this because it doesn't matter. We're not just processing masculine here. We're, we're, we're balancing both sides of the hemisphere. And no, I've had these are the questions I've been asked. You won't lose your intuition. You won't lose like all of these things that you've become. But to understand balance is harmony and true abundance, not just enough, not ten steps forward, ten steps back. Consistent, sustainable manifestations that are win-win. Not okay. I have to lose something to get something because I'm gonna I'm gonna end on this. When I co-create with physical reality instead of my other side of my brain, I have to give something away to get something. <laughs> so important you hear this. So important you hear this, which means yes. that I have to give my freedom away for money. Right. I have to give my time away, right, for my kids, right? In if I'm co-creating here, I will lose something to get something because that's the rule of 3D. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm if I'm co-creating here, there are no rules. So what you'll notice is not just a win-win for me. The byproduct of my win will be your win. It will, and it will be rooted in my lineage, in my bloodline, in my timelines, and it will be projected into the seeds of consciousness. So it will be then taken further and expand. So co-creating here, guys, is subtraction. Co-creating here is multiplication. Wow. Okay. So. We already finished our first phase of quantum fitness, but here's the thing. I really, really recommend that if you're going to go on this journey with me, start at the first part, which is our weight. Are you waiting or carrying weight? Right. If anything's not moving, if you feel trapped, stuck, blocked, it's weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's physical weight, if it's physical pain, if it's, you know, body issues, same stuff. Okay. It's manifesting differently. If you're having issues with relationships, 
same thing. The second phase, we're about to start on the 27th. It's called addiction, the uh, disease, and the act of aging. So I am going to teach you guys how to stop the clock because none of you need to be older than 21, right? Because we came here to play. Right? Right, right, right. And, and it's so easy. Once you start getting this online, like you become the driver because again, don't you feel younger as your body's older? Like mm -hmm. when I was 30, I felt 50. I'm 46 now. I feel like 25. Wow. Right. So again, it's, it's bringing that feel and then recoding the cells. Cause they're just like, who are we? Who are we? Who are we? Who are we? And you're like, you're not loved. And they're like, okay. And they are becoming not loved. Right. And they're mm -hmm. stressed out and over adrenalized and, you know, like either high of meditation or reality of your relationship sucking and it's high, low, high, low, and your body's aging very quickly. Mm -hmm. Disease, a body that's not at ease. <laughs> it's very easy to fix disease, you guys. I hope you hear me. Disease is one of the easier things to fix. Money, super easy, right? So what we want to do is we want to get to become a co-creator here. You just go to my website, jessicaalstrom.com. Obviously, I've got 5,000 videos somewhere on YouTube. But this is really where like my work is right now. And I would say that it is the best of everything that I've ever done. It is the simplest, which means that even if someone was not on their journey, if they could get past slight nomenclature, they would be fine with this program. Like your auntie who has read one secret book. Perfect. You know, it's like she can still do this. So it's not so far off where you're not really going to understand and I would recommend doing the first series because in that I, it's all action based. Because remember, Divine Masculine is about taking action. It's not about wishing and fantasizing and begging and pleading. It is showing up. It is the it is not the it's not the work. It's it's walking your talk mm -hmm. and grief has to be moved through action. OK, we'll talk about that in the video. So, yeah, you can find me there. I would say start at phase one. And then phase two is addiction series. Okay. And you can get it justgolstrom.com. That's my website. Did okay. we lose you? Yeah. Let me put this up there real quick so everybody can see it. Um, um, did I spell that right? It's, uh, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, you got two ways in there, right? Yeah. Jessica Alstrom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Double A, Dave. Yeah, so let's show this so you guys can see it. So this is Jessica Alstrom. That's the website at the bottom, going along the bottom. That awesome. Which, yeah. Yeah. Um, you're awesome. And we will, have a, we will have a phase three of this quantum fitness, and it's all going to be in my book, which is going to be chunky, but it's uh, weight and waiting, right? Addiction, the aging process, and disease, like gone. And then phase three is becoming the superhuman. Because that's where you've released enough grief. You've become, you've learned how to use your hardware correct. You've activated the inner child who is immortal, by the way. Mm. So now you're creating your own reality. And now you get to learn how to play with these very different hormones, right? And, and, and think about, you know, psychic kids are already in China and they're walking through walls and we understand that 5D is where you learn about choice and 6D is where you shape shift, right? Where you can be here and there and everywhere. And if we can actualize that in our, imagine Jeff, like you and I have the potential right now to be able to, to be Superman, right? Mm -hmm. In this lifetime. Right. I mean, my kids already think that I'm a superhero because they're just like, how do you do this? I'm well, like, you got the cape, you've got the. <laughs> I already got it. You know, but it's really all just about alchemy. It's about. Right. It's right. about like not going, well, I hate this. It's like, okay, this sucks. This is alchemy, by the way. This sucks. What can I make it into that doesn't suck? Mm -hmm. Like lead into gold. And if this is all I have to start with, that does not mean this is what I'm going to end with. Mm -hmm. But it also means that I cannot try to escape this right. and delusion myself, you know, to, to be something that I'm not or live in comparison instead of just like, okay, well, this is the... This is the manure I grew in. This is the seed that I have. And and what is that? What can I do instead of what am I allowed to do? What can I do? Mm -hmm. And and that it does. I will tell you, it takes courage, you know, and I think that people are finding quantum fitness that are literally sick of the journey. Like, you know, you just get to a certain point where you're exhausted, like, OK, act, DNA activations and this and this and this. And then you're like, OK, why does my life still suck? 
right? <laughs> I feel great in meditation, but, and I opened my Kundalini, but, you know, my mom's still, I'm still getting trolled on Facebook and getting attacked. So it's like, right. that's a manifestation. Right. So I'm just saying that, you know, like you said, oh, you know, I had this big career. I didn't want any of this. I, I don't want any of this. This isn't my desire. My desire is joy. My desire is to that little girl who suffered so much to experience joy every day in the moment, regardless of what's happening. I don't care about the teachings. I don't care about the books. I don't care about the money. I care about this girl experiencing as much joy and giving the abundance of your heart. You know this. You love so much. It's like off-putting, like, ugh. You know, it's like, you know, create a world where we're not too much for someone and create people who can receive that and create safety where we can receive that. Right. That's honestly why I do what I do, because the other stuff is meaningless when you don't feel joy inside. Right. Right. And so that is my my purpose is joy. Like the way that I get there, you know. I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And shut up. No, 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 no. This is, I would love to have you back. Um, yeah. This yeah, is fantastic. This is, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Everybody get over to Jessica Alstrom. F look her up on social media. Um, the thing that I find amazing about you, one of many things, but how creative you are. I mean, your outfits and just <laughs> how you decorate and everything. It's like, man, she just is a creating, manifesting. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm an, wow. okay, I don't look like the spiritual teacher. That's for no, sure. No. Well, and I'll tell you that the one thing growing up is I had the Barbie, right? Mm. And I always wanted the the clothes, like I really love being a woman. Like I don't yeah. feel objectified showing yeah. my body. I'm like, look what I got. Look how cool this is. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's everything. Wow. Yeah. It's never been like, I yeah. don't feel objectified. I feel, I feel like I get to be a woman mm -hmm. and, and I celebrate that in fashion and design and art to me. You'll see with, if you guys join me with quantum fitness, the color is extremely healing. Mm -hmm. And and so I've always worked with design and fabric and creating my own clothes and, and creating my home. And and that is kind of like where I can take a break from all this science and, and go, OK, I, I came to to like learn how to be joy, but I don't want that 24 seven. Right. So the the fashion and the, the trips and like my friends and like the homes and my kids, like that's how I get to experience the joy of the work. So it's like if I'm 46 and I can wear a bikini, I'm proud of myself. Like, you know what I mean? Because I have been overweight my entire life. People don't know that. People don't know that I had autoimmune disease. They don't know that I had a raging eating disorder. You know, they don't know a lot about what we've been through. Right. And therefore, you know, again, you judge that book by its cover. But you see me and I am literally celebrating mm. coming from nothing. Wow. So it's. I am my biggest fan. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. You know, like I don't care if anybody else likes it. <laughs> right. And it. that and that makes it just for me, it's like I'm proud of myself. Yeah. You know, and I get to share how I feel in the most transparent way that I can. And I'm not allowed to share shame to share grief, you know. I'm not I'm not embarrassed to tell you that after everything I've been, that my own father doesn't want me, like it hurts my little inner child, but I'm not embarrassed. They're humiliated to share that because mm. it just is. And, right. and it's only going to make me desire more for him. Right. And, and, and whatever he like gave me that he couldn't quite get done. I'm sure I'll get it done. And I, I got a lot of my artistic qualities from him. You know, he's a woodworker, a builder, an artist, a painter. And I have picked that up over the last few years. And it's a great outlet for therapy as well. Like touch, taste, feel, mm. cooking, Right. So it's not all about the spiritual work. If I if I could recommend get away from like the seeking and say, start living, because you'll find all your shadows in the living. Mm. You know, they'll just bump right into you. But I think people are afraid that. So they keep thinking if I keep searching and keep studying and keep developing. But I'm saying you're chasing you're being chased by a hungry ghost. Mm. And it. and you will smack into it at some point. And I will tell you that I have been through it so I can guide you with compassion through that experience very quickly. I mean, I went through that whole experience 
in, in basically 24 hours mm. of the whole grief release. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me kind of a week to, to get the nerve to write him to, to be, you know, and then to have it come back and then fully experience it 12 hours. So no, you're not going to be in grief a long time, but I don't think we ever are allowed to, to experience grief, especially as young, because you see someone pass away and then you've got to be this person, right? You've got to right. be strong. So, all right, I've taken enough of your time, but yes, let's talk mm -hmm. again. Cause I know that you've got, and I'm just, here's another thing that's weird. Like I love co-creating with men because to be able to work with you, who is, you know, doing the same work that I'm doing is, mm -hmm. it's a, it's really about mending these, these relationships that we have out there and, and, you know, 95% divorce rate or 5% unhappiness. I mean, yeah, do you, and, you really have, have you ever seen a relationship that you would trade places with? Right, right. A I mean, human relationship, not right, a movie. Right, right, right. And that's the other part of like the 95%, the people that, you know, are stuck in marriages that they've taken this vow till death to us part. You've been dead for decades. They already died 20 years ago. Right. right. It's like, emotions. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on. No, Jessica, mm -hmm. we got to wrap this up. I want to yeah. stay all day. Stay on after I close this off. Cause so you it's gonna, but everybody, well. thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this and found this of value, I mean, it was like mind blowing, please invite people into the potential zone group. Um, because I'm going to be sharing more and more of amazing trainers and teachers and thought leaders like this. And I will have Jessica back many, many times. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for being here and have an incredible day. And as I always end, live like your life depends on it because it yeah. does. Yeah. Live on purpose. Right. Yeah, live on purpose. <laughs> thank you, Jessica, so much for being here. You're amazing. Thank you for I having appreciate me. Thank you so much. Go check her out. You mm -hmm. will love her. She is amazing. So everybody take care of and be blessed.